attention on the welfare impact of a sales tax. My name is Kevin Hind. What exactly is a sales tax? Well, quite simply, it's a tax at the point of sale. Uh, in the most countries, you have taxes on the sale of goods, and those taxes may be either a percentage tax. In the UK, for example, we have a 20% value-added tax on the price of a good, and but it could also be that we have a per unit tax. For example, the Chancellor of the Exchequer may raise the price of uh, petrol or gas, gasoline if you like, uh, up by 10 pence. They may ta put a tax of say 10 pence per litre on a particular good. So that's all a sales tax is. And we're going to look at some of the implications that has for consumers and sellers, the suppliers of goods. Well, here's a basic demand and supply di diagram, which you should be familiar with by now. And in essence, you've got um, a downward sloping demand curve, an upward sloping supply curve, and we have an equilibrium uh, where we have a price of OP and a quantity demanded and supplied of OQ in a particular time period. So, nothing unusual about that. We can also show the uh, benefits to the consumer from the market. That's given by area A. This is known as consumer surplus. The reality is that some um, buyers will inf are quite willing to pay above OP, as that's what the demand curve represents, but they get a price of OP, and we can represent their gain by the area A. Likewise, there are some sellers who are willing to supply this particular commodity uh, below the price of OP and they in fact get a price of OP. So they've gained. That's what the supply curve shows. It shows a willingness to supply a particular good. So some sellers might be willing to supply at a price somewhere around here but they get the price of P. So the area B is represented of what's called producer surplus. So when we look at a normal market arrangement before any tax is imposed, there is a consumer surplus, which we can represent in our diagram by area A, and a producer surplus, which is the benefits to producers from the market arrangement, which is represented by area B. So what happens when we impose a sales tax, or the government imposes a sales tax? Well, what happens is, and in this particular case we're looking at a per unit tax so that every quantity supplied the price of the good goes up by the amount of the tax so in effect the there is a an upward shift a parallel shift in the supply curve the the tax has had an impact on supply why on the on the seller well largely because the seller has to make a decision about supplying a particular good. They may be influenced by the nature of regulation and taxation in the business, so it's going to affect the costs of supplying that particular good, that quantity if you like. So here we have the tax. The tax is a per unit tax. It shifted the supply curve from S to S plus the tax. What that means of course is that now the price and quantity have changed. The price is no longer OPOQ, uh, uh, the quantity OQ, but we've got a new equilibrium where the demand curve equates with the new supply schedule, that's S plus the tax. So the price in the market now, because of the tax uh, levied by the government, uh, a per unit tax levied by the government, is OP1, OQ1. So hopefully you can see immediately that there is a, a a burden on the consumer because now their prices have gone up from OP to OP1 and indeed also the quantity in the market has fallen from OQ to OQ1. So what's happened to the the seller's supply of this particular good? Well the reality of course is that now that the supply of the sellers are only supplying OQ1 they're only willing to pay uh, to uh, supply this good at a price up to OPS the rest from PS to P1 is effectively a tax, it is the tax, the per unit tax on this particular commodity. So there are clearly implications for both the, the buyer, the consumer and the seller. 
the producer. What happens is that the area of consumer surplus and producer surplus shrinks. No longer is area A uh, represented by uh, well the area we saw before uh, where we had a price of OP and a quantity OQ but now we've got a price of OP1 and a quantity OQ1 so now the consumer surplus has shrunk there are still people willing to pay above P1 but there are effectively the gain for the consumer is a lot lower likewise the the seller is losing out Bef the no longer that the price is OP uh, and the quantity OQ we now have a price of OP1 but actually the price that the seller gets is only OPS so in effect the area of producer surplus has shrunk to area B much smaller than the previous area B we saw so what's happened then well what we get is a burden to both the consumer that's given by area C and also a burden to the uh, producer area D notice that what we have is that the tax which is PS to P1 is the total tax per unit in supplying OQ1 but the burden on the consumer because the price they pay in the market is P okay uh, so before the tax was P now it's P1 so the rest must be made up by the supplier they also bear some of this tax so area D is representative of the burden on the producer whereas area C is the burden on the consumer so C plus the D is the area of the tax because now we're selling OQ1 in the marketplace and at a price P1 and the tax is this area P1 to uh, PS for every unit that you sell of, that's from 0 to Q1 so area C and D is the value of the tax that goes to the, the government so that in a, a sense is in essence is the burden to the consumer and the producer notice that what's happened is that before the tax the consumer surplus was the whole of this area okay uh, that was the consumer surplus and the producer surplus was the whole of this area here okay but now it's shrunk the government is taking a chunk but it because it's by imposing a tax areas C and D it's taken a bit from the consumer and a bit from the producer but actually it's also taken a little bit from society as well because it's interfered with choice what's happened is that the quantity has fallen and the prices have gone up so there are effectively a dead what we call a dead weight loss to society because of this interference in the marketplace area E represents the fact that there are consumers who would have bought between Q1 and Q uh, more of this good if there hadn't been a tax and they would have had a gain which we, we can represent by area E but now of course they can't they won't be buying this good they're not willing to pay these the price of P1 they're willing to pay a price between P1 and P but they've lost out likewise there's a, a group of sellers that have lost out area F because they were willing to sell this good uh, in the marketplace and get a price in hope of getting a price of P but they no longer can get a price of P they can only get a price effectively of PS because the tax remember goes back to the government so society loses out because of this tax that is the key to, to note I thought I'd just finally talk a little bit about the slope of the demand curve and how that impacts upon the burden of the tax uh, I'll also say something about the slope of the supply curve uh, to, to finish off completely but let's just look at the the slope of the demand curve it's, if you look at sales taxes taxes are on, on the sale of goods per unit taxes they tend to occur on goods which have what we call inelastic demand that is that there are for example few substitutes for those particular goods you notice that there are often taxes on uh, fuel uh, taxes on alcohol taxes on cigarettes these are the, the so-called sin taxes as they like to be known or are known at least in the popular press so let's have a look at the nature of a, 
of the elasticity on who bears the tax. Here's our um, sales tax again. I've drawn, you'll notice that the slope of this demand curve is a little bit shallower than the previous one. We're just going to compare that. The, the demand curve we had before in our previous diagram actually was quite steep. As I'll say in a moment, that's an, more of an inelastic demand than this one. It's a shallower slope to the demand curve. I've left the supply curve as we had before just to make the illustration. So here we have our equilibrium, O P and O Q, and when we get a tax, the tax goes up by the amount of the tax. It's a per unit tax, so it might be 10 pence on a, a litre of fuel or whatever, and this has an impact clearly on the, the price. Prices go up from P to P1 star, just exactly the same analysis before, uh, but now the quantity has fallen from Q to Q1 star, that the sellers are only going to get a price of PS star in the market, the rest is actually the tax, which we, we've noted before. So the burdens are shown, uh, uh, the burden on the consumer is given by the red area, because the price will go up from P to P1 star. We were originally at this equilibrium point here, now we're at this equilibrium point here. Uh, effectively prices have gone up from P to P1 star that because of this tax. The distance from P S star to P1 star is the tax. It's this horizontal shift here. And you'll notice in this example that the producer seems to bear a much bigger share of the tax when the demand curve is elastic. Certainly they bear more than the consumer. The red area is a smaller area than the brown area. And we can just show that when we superimpose the old uh, demand schedule on this particular graph. So we've just superimposed our demand curve, the one that we had before. Uh, we've superimposed it, just to show you again what we did, this is the, the demand curve we had previously and now we're just superimposing it on top. We started off with exactly the same price, notice what happened is that the because we've got an, uh, an inelastic demand curve, the price has gone up by quite a lot, and the quantity hasn't fallen by as much as when we had an elastic demand curve. When we had an elastic demand curve, the price went up as a small amount, but the quantity fell by a large amount. Okay, it fell from Q to Q1 star. Prices, when you have uh, elastic demand, don't go up as much when in the marketplace when we look at imposing a tax. And this raises a sort of important issue for uh, governments and societies. Who do we, well, what sort of goods and services are we most likely to put a sales tax uh, on? And the good is, the reason is we, we, what we tend to do is we put um, more of a, more likely to put a sales tax on goods with inelastic demand. If you look at the two areas that we've just the the area which we had for the elastic demand curve and the um, that that's given by this area the red and the brown area but if you look at the previous um, diagram with the inelastic demand the yellow and the blue areas are much bigger in other words the revenue to the government is much greater uh, and the impact on sellers is not as dramatic when you have inelastic demand. The quantity demanded doesn't fall by as much, but the revenue to the government goes up by quite a bit. Okay, So when you've got uh, the inelastic demand, you find that revenues are greater because it's uh, people don't want to switch out of things like fuel. They need fuel. They, they, lots of people like alcohol. They tend to stick with it. People like cigarettes. These are goods we know have an elastic demand. But if you put a, a tax on, an, on an, a good with elastic demand, you find that the big losers are the sellers, whereas with inelastic demand, sellers don't lose as much in terms of their, their sales and the government gains quite dramatically. So the more price inelastic demand is, the bigger the burden on the consumer and the greater the revenue to the uh, the, the tax uh, man, if you like, or tax woman. Um, and that, in essence, is uh, what one, one of the implications of imposing a, uh, 
a, a, a sales tax you impose it on a good with inelastic demand just a final thought for you is is that if you have more elastic supply uh, I haven't shown it in this particular diagram but you can imagine if for example a what we call a perfectly elastic supply curve and had a horizontal supply curve we pivoted that um, or that supply curve round both those supply curves round and put a tax on you would find that the burden was borne entirely by the consumer there'd be no burden on the the uh, seller at all so you also find that when um, you've got more elastic supply the consumer will bear more of the tax We'll leave it there. Thanks very much indeed.